Charles Fortescue. Okay, kind of lesser known. And so, um, similar to la yesterday's presentation where Eric has brought Heaviside's work into the next uh, stage, uh, pretty much as a sequel, um, this is going to be the same thing where Eric has brought uh, Charles Fortescue work forward in the same manner, and this is also considered a sequel to uh, the method of symmetrical uh, coordinates applied to the solution of polyphase networks. Uh, this is going to be a four-hour presentation, um, maybe around 10 o'clock, maybe we can take maybe a five-minute break, something like that, and whenever you feel like kind of in the middle if you want to... Uh, take a break, and then... Um, I, I'm always willing to be interrupted for questions, because this okay. is complicated and you, So you want to take the questions so, as you're yeah. going, instead of yes, at the yeah, end? Yeah. So if you do have a question, and if ever, there's not a lot of people in here right now, um, but if uh, anybody does have questions, maybe to line up here, and if anybody wants to maybe even scoot a little bit closer, some of the slides are, slides are going to be um, similar to yesterday, so it's going to be easier to see if you're up, up closer. And then towards the end, there is a, a music segment. And then again, Eric's going to go over uh, to the sound station there, and he's going to play uh, some Bach as it uh, uh, applies to this type of map. So anyway, please welcome Eric Dollard. Thank you. OK, let me get warmed up here. Um, uh, the Fortescue method which uh, this is kind of rather an obscure area of electrical engineering, but an important area of electrical engineering, is actually uh, a kind of uh, unsung, how would I put it? Uh, this, this is really a very important, uh, you might say, advancement in mathematics. But because it was developed by an engineer, the academia mathematicians don't want to hear or read a word of it. But um, it actually, it's, it's such a powerful theory that it can lead into like number theory, it extends the theory of numbers. And um, so I did a lot of experimenting with, with it in this and actually, uh, accomplished something that I've been wanting to do for decades was to connect the work of Johann Sebastian Bach, which is called polyphonic music, into the polyphase electrical systems. And I finally kind of reached that. So, But my primary objective in doing this, like the last presentation, are these are extensions of two chapters out of my presentation called The uh, History, Theory, and Practice of the Electrical Utility System. And the two Okay, now we're actually going to develop the equations for calculating polyphase power systems. And we're going to stick with three phase. We don't have time to be playing around with all kinds of different phases. So. In this situation, we have three wires and a neutral. A phase current means a current from a phase to a neutral. A line current would be, and the delta would be between the two phases, but because the Fortescue system is star, and because there's neutrals and power systems, we will have to do it on a phase to neutral basis. So this is how we'll begin. We have three general numbers, as they're called in the Fortescue theory. In this case, the numbers have magnitude and direction. They're variables. They can have any magnitude or direction. So when you have power factor complications, you don't know what angle any phase is going to line up in, particularly when the power factor of all three phases is different wild stuff happens, and this is something that's starting to become, uh, rear its head in the power systems is the neutrals burning out for no apparent reason. After we perform the operations, it is six amperes, and that's our set. So at this point, I'm gonna get into the actual theory of the Fortescue equation. It's all going pretty fast.
So this is going to be the general equation for any number of phases. Uh, Fortescue's own paper was so complex that I derived this from the Wagner and Evan books from the chapter called, uh, I believe, Multiphase Systems. And then I did a lot of reworking or conversion on it, which is basically what's done in Verser Algebra 1. And this is basically then the Fortescue equation expressed in terms of the Wagner and Evans equation, and then my turning it around using my uh, symbols and what have you and making things rotate in the proper direction came up with the re, uh, revised equation. And this is, these are the equations. They're infinite series in two coordinate directions. So they represent essentially a matrix. But you have to remember that they're sequences, that everything here is in a state of motion where you just froze it with reference to phase A. So what is Unique here is I am using the Stime, extended Steinmetz root of the unit representing the Verser operation so that we can develop a numerical matrix. Okay, so let's do this graph. It always helps when we do this stuff graphically. So this is our positive sequence series. 0, 1, 2, 0 for a three-phase system. So, so anytime you have a 3, in actuality, that's brought you back to top dead center, so you list that as a 0. So we have the first step, the second step, and the third step. 0, 1, 2, and then 3 brings you back to 0. It's like, um, kind of like on the 24-hour clock. You know, you got noon and you got midnight. Okay, we go backwards, reverse, negative sequence, 0, 2, 1, 0. So those numbers at the top, those were pulled right out of the matrix. Okay, so now... Let's apply this to harmonics. So this is an odd harmonic situation. So we have the fundamental. We have the third harmonic. This one is out of phase with the fundamental. And according to the, the Fourier viewpoint, and in practice, the third harmonic is always one-third the fundamental. And then the fifth is out of phase with that, and that's one-fifth of the fundamental. The seventh is out of phase with that, and it's one-seventh of the fundamental, and et cetera. So this is a system, system of odd harmonics. What the hell is that? Obviously, we can keep increasing them, and this will turn into a square wave of a finite a amplitude. Now we can take the harmonics in phase, and they are all in this kind of position on the oscilloscope screen. And they tend to be the mirror image of the square wave, where if you have all the harmonics, it doesn't make a flat top at unit magnitude, it produces an impulse of infinite magnitude. So a condition of, uh, of odd or order harmonics in phase can produce some rather destructive impulses. So we can call the in phase one a zero sequence harmonic progression, and we can call the out of phase ones an alternating sequence harmonic progression as we had done with the polyphase. So let's make these harmonics cyclic. And then the process keeps repeating itself. Twelfth step, we get another oppositional. And so on down the line until in the sixteenth step, all the harmonics are at top dead center. 
Okay, now let's, let's make it roll. I'm going to let this go for a while, and you can watch it. Back to the top. Now the cycle repeats. Back to the top. And it's again. You notice here they're all in opposition. So we can see an alternating sequence in here. Back to the top. Now the finale is to apply all of this to the music of Johann Sebastian Bach, which is um, considered polyphonic music. In other words, polyphase music. So I am going to do the mathematics that um, we've been previously working with and apply it to a particular piece of box music. But the, the resulting analysis is going to have to be in your head listening to the music. I think I will play the music twice because it's good to go over it a second time because we're dealing with a piece of music of almost inordinate complexity polyphase music that goes forwards and backwards in time and in and out of counter space and, uh, and all of the above. Now it's kind of hard from the mathematical standpoint to get anything out of this. You have to have the eyes of a lizard in order to really see what's going on. And, uh, and there's uh, the different phases are not brought in reference to phase A. I had to do that. That was a very difficult process. And uh, fortunately here, the old system is used of bandwidths. So everything pretty much stays within the, uh, the lines that bound it, which is fortunate. So he calls this the double fugue at the tenth. Uh, I believe the tenth is probably a musical interval, a ratio. And a double fugue means that there's two polyphase systems. The hard part was, is phase B and C are not in the same time frame, so you can't use what's on the sheet music. So what I had to do is I had to normalize them like I did. I had to bring all the phases back to top dead center for the alternating current.